Fear is a very interesting emotion. It can motivate or it can paralyze. It can be productive or it could be destructive. Depending on who you fear, why you fear, and what you fear. That fear is either praised in the Quran or it is looked down upon when it becomes paralyzing and destructive and leads you to nowhere but despair. And unless you have that hope to balance you out, there is no way that that fear could possibly be productive because the default of fear is that it is a paralyzing emotion. It needs hope in order for it to be productive. Feeling anxious, stressful, worried, having what we call somewhat normal or natural depression, this is a part of life. Nothing wrong with that. You don't have to feel spiritually bad if you're extra anxious or extra worried. The point is that we have to keep it within a healthy bound and not take it to that, a level that is unhealthy. The Quran clearly tells us that feeling anxious, feeling worried, stressful is a part of being human. There's nothing wrong with that. Societal problems can and will cause us stress. Allah says to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it is possible that your anxiety, your anguish will cause you to die because of grief. Yes, it is true. Faith is a powerful antidote to most types of depression, even though it's not always the case. Fear is just false evidence appearing real. And fear stops most people from taking action. You know, everything you could possibly want is on the other side of fear. You just need to step through the fear. And what I would suggest is you visualize your life as you want it to be. And you focus on that because what you focus on expands. And if you push through that fear by focusing on what you want, everything you possibly want is just on the other side of fear. What is fear? And there's many different answers, but at the end of the day, Fear is largely in part and due to our perception of life and the way that we look at things. You see, fear is a negative emotion. And it simply means that emotion is energy in motion. And because it's an energy, we can control it, we can direct it, we can change it. You see, fear is the opposite of faith. And what is faith? Faith is the ability to see the invisible, which means that you believe what you see in your mind's eye. So if you don't believe what you see, you're going to start to feel fear. So you can flip back and forth between these two states. And what we want to know is we want to increase our awareness and we want to change our perception of how we see the world. And that way, the fear we experience will change. The instant that emotion, that positive emotion of faith is created, you start to feel better and you start to reframe and rewire your entire brain and nervous system. Now, does this mean fear goes away? No. What I am saying though, is that you don't have to live in it. And even if you feel it, you can still do it anyway. And this is one of the cool truisms of life. The truth is this, if we do not have a way to reprogram our minds, to overcome fear, we will never be successful at our own specific missions in life. So, if there's one thing I want you to remember today, it's this. You can reprogram your brain to override fear if you name and reject your fear. Reprogram your brain with different thoughts and take action in direct opposition to your fear. If you do all these three things, guess what? You can do anything you set your mind to. So Pay attention to the good and actually look for it. Think of blessings in your life and be grateful for them. There are so many countless studies that prove that practicing gratitude does wonders for our mental and emotional health. And it helps, especially with depression and anxiety. And when we practice gratitude, we increase the levels of dopamine and serotonin in our brains, which cause us to be happier. And remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala proclaimed, He made an announcement. 
If you are grateful, I will surely increase you. If you are grateful, I will surely increase you. Alhamdulillah. If we reframe the way that we look at life, if we reframe it and look at it like life is a series of risks, it's a series of growth, it's a series of challenges, it's a series of taking those next steps, even if you don't know the outcome, well then we start to feel fear a lot less and we start to enjoy the process a lot more. And this is what I really hope you take away from this is that the next time that fear comes up in your mind and you start to think, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if the talent, ability or, or the resources to do this. You don't let it stop you. So deciding as you look at your life, as you look into the future and say, what fears am I holding on to? What fears that I'm allowing to imprison me that's keeping me from breaking out, that's keeping me from living up to my true potential, that's keeping me from really being happy, that's keeping me from having a sense of adventure and excitement in my life. What fears that I'm giving that permission to? Notice what I said, that we must give our permission to fear to immobilize us because whatever discomfort you experience whatever challenges or difficulty that it is you got to handle it you got to go up in there and wrestle with it will it be easy no will it be challenging yes but that's just what you must go through in order to get where you want to go and guess what you are strong enough to do it you're strong enough and your life is worth whatever you have to go through to get past this addiction. Whatever you have to do, this dream you got, whatever you want to do, will it be easy to just run out there and do it? No. Will it happen overnight? No. Will it be a struggle? Yes. Will there be times when you can't make ends meet? Yes, that's a part of it. Will there be times you won't know what to do? Yes, that's a part of it. Can I do it? Yes. And I'm saying to you that all of us who have been entombed by fear have the capacity to resurrect ourselves. So I'm saying before you are boxed and buried, decide that you're going to box and bury your fears. Decide that you're going to begin to live life on a new level, seeking out new horizons, that you're going to find more love and more joy and more ways to give more to life. God said something, I love this. He says, everything a man does for himself, guess what? He takes with him, but everything he does for others, he leaves behind. So when you begin to say, what is it that I want to leave? What contribution that I want to begin to make? What difference do I want to make in life? What is it that I want to do with the rest of the life? that I have left? What, what chances I need to take? What risks do I need to begin to embrace? What fears do I need to step on? What areas of my life am I dead right now? What dream? You can either live your dreams or live your fears. You have got to get to a point where you say, I'm sick and tired of living like this. There's got to be more. So as we begin to look toward the future and look at what will it take for us to break through those fears. One, acknowledging the fear, knowing it's all right, some fear is healthy. Beginning to know that your dreams, your passions, your drive to achieve whatever it is you want, as it has more power and meaning, it will move you past your fears. As you begin to feel that you deserve it, your passion and goal is so strong, the fears won't matter. As you begin to trust yourself, and put yourself in the situation where you have to make it happen, you will make it happen. And I'm saying, you can have fears, but don't surrender. Don't let your fears have you. You're more than capable of making this your decade.